What do you think people fall in love? Why is it that certain forms of love are short-lived while the others endure for life? There are many theories that have been proposed by researchers, sociologists and psychologists who have tried to explain why and how love forms and sustains. Love also has mystical and spiritual meanings, mostly in Abrahamic religions. The multiplicity of its uses understanding mixed with the convolution of the feelings involved makes love bizarrely tough to steadily describe if matched with other emotional conditions. Although there are many theories that have been explained by theorists, there are six important ones which are usually looked up to and are recognized by theorists in the world. Triangular Theory of Love Color Wheel Theory of Love Attachment Theory Vulnerability and Care Theory of Love Reward Theory of Attraction Filter Theory Triangular Theory of Love Psychologist Robert Sternberg has been accredited with explaining the triangular theory of love. As per the theory, Sternberg gives love comprises of three constituents – intimacy, passion and commitment. It is these three components that have been viewed together in the shape of a triangle. The love that an individual receives is subject to how strong these three constituents are and the sort of love one experiences is determined by on their fault skin to one another. There could be a variety of combinations of these elements and three could be a different explanation for each one. Every component displays a diverse trait of love. A triangle and the vertices of the triangle intersects at points and Sternberg came to a conclusion that there are seven forms of love. The triangle represents the amount and style of love. The size stands for amount of love, whereas the shape stands for style of love. This style could alter while the relationship continues. First, liking here is not used in an inconsequential logic. According to Sternberg, this close liking describes friendship where an individual feels the bond, feels the cordiality and feels a sense of being close with each other. Desire or any long commitments is something which is not present in this type of love. Second, infatuated love could also be explained as instant love or love at first sight, but since closeness elements of love are absent here, this love would fade away soon. Third, Infatuated love is often what is felt as love at first sight, but without the intimacy and the commitment components of love, infatuated love may disappear suddenly. Fourth, romantic love is where the lovers are emotionally and bodily attached or connected through ardent excitement. Fifth, compassionate love can usually be seen in marriages where the desire is no more present but there is an attachment a profound connection and commitment which is still present compassionate love is usually a relationship with someone which is shared for life without any physical desires it's sturdier than friendship as there is commitment present in compassionate love the term companionate could also be used for such relationship because it is bound by the love which binds friends or people who love to be together in non-sexual but a friendly relation. Sixth, fatuous can be illustrated by a short courtship and immediate marriage where commitment is stirred by desire without the steadying effect of affection. Seventh, consummate love is the whole or complete form of love. It represents perfect relationship for which almost everyone endeavors for but is hardly achieved by anyone. Upholding the relationship is tougher than attaining it. The deepest of love will not survive if there is no expression in the relationship. Consummate might not endure. For instance, if passion loses its charm with time, that will change to companionate love. The stability of the three traits of love, according to Sternberg, are definite to change the way for a particular relationship. Consummate love has been found to have all three elements of love. For us humans, this is the perfect relationship. Intimacy, commitment and passion do not grow with time. Understanding these elements of love will help couples from staying away from the right path. 
they can look into these areas, understand them and try to improve their relationship with their spouses and save their relationships that could be on the verge of falling apart. Color Wheel Theory of Love Love has been a topic of dispute for many years. It has often been discussed at parties, houses, restaurants and television shows. Everyone seems to have a different understanding based on their psychology and thinking. Colors have often been associated with love and this was understood by John Allen Lee. Lee was a Canadian psychologist who wrote a theory on love and described six different styles of love. He used Greek words in his theory and his book was published in 1973 by the name of Colors of Love, an exploration of ways of loving. Lee has described three primary and three secondary colors in this theory. Primary Types Eros Eros represents the color red and has been named after the son of Greek goddess Aphrodite. Eros also means passionate or erotic in Greek. Lee has used Eros to explain the desires and the more physical nature of love through this word. The desire to be sexually content, want to satisfy and aesthetic delight for one another, it also comprises of building sexual safety for the other by endeavouring to desert alternatives of sharing one's sexual desires with someone else. It is an extremely bodily, deep, obsessive style of love. Erotic lovers select their partners by instinct or attraction, chemistry. Love at first sight happens in the Eros style of love, mostly in comparison to the other styles of love. Eros lovers have much clarity in the type of partners they desire. Such people tend to have optimistic thoughts about their relationship and always look forward to marrying their partners. Individuals who are erotic lovers will share everything with their partners and also be willing to know everything about their spouse or partner. They will usually address their partner with names such as sexy or sweetie and think of them to be flawless and perfect. For them, marriage is a prolonged honeymoon. They are sensitive and will be hurt if they are criticized by their partners and tend to be in misery and get distressed if they are separated from their lovers. The people of other forms of love usually see them as impractical and ensnared in a fictional world. The emotions of the lovers who are erotic connect to each other and the feeling of love and lust strengthens each other to make a strong bond. It gives logic of security to both the lovers who understand and see that they would complement each other where physical wants were considered also creating a purpose for life. As per Maslow, physical contentment is the bottom most in the hierarchy of wants. It needs the partners to bring in harmony to the sexual desires of the other partner, work on keeping the partner attracted while upholding sexual health in the process. One of the drawbacks of Eros style could be decline in the fascination and the threats of living in a fictional world. Sometimes a partner who is not as attracted to sexual desires might feel as if they are being used for bodily pleasures. Some of the noticeable characteristics of Eros are Strong physical and emotional bond between the partners. It starts with a partner who is a complete stranger and soon induces instant delight and enthusiasm. This style of love could be elite but not possessive. An Eros partner wants to get physical soon and looks forward to different styles and variety in it. Eros lovers are always ready for the love and the risk involved in it. Bring it on. Ludus the color blue has been associated with ludus and has been taken from Latin meaning games. The meaning makes it clear, a ludus lover is some time who are not ready to commit soon. Ludus style lovers are fun loving and don't look forward to marriage soon. They enjoy their freedom and usually have more than one partner at a time. They stay away from getting emotionally involved with their lovers. They hardly share their feelings or thoughts with their lovers as they have a feeling of insecurity of being misused by their lovers. The Ludus lovers are talented in convincing their partners for dates and love to take them out. They are pretty confident in their approach but are interested just in the initial phase of dating. They never get deep in their relationships if their partners or situations start showing signs of emotional bonding or respect some sort of commitment, they start looking for new lovers. 
they don't hesitate to cheat and break up stoned both of them. They are the first of all styles of lovers to commit adultery. Ludus lovers take sex to be a sport or game and involve in relationships as they look to it as a challenge. In short, Ludus individuals love to have short-term dates, one-night stands and prefer friends those who are open to such partners. The drawback of Ludus' style of love is infidelity which could take the shape of sexual addiction if it goes to extreme. Some of the noticeable characteristics of Ludus are Ludus don't commit. They have absolutely no intentions of loving someone emotionally. They love to have partners who also enjoy physical closeness. They like to engage on physical activities for fun without having any emotional attachments with their partners. Storge The color yellow has been depicted for Storge style of love by Lee. Storge is a Greek word and it means loving someone because there is a connection within the family, because they are related. Storge actually signifies love among the family members, bond among the parents and children, brothers and sisters, grandparents and grandchildren, among the cousins, etc. It could also be used for close friends. Storge requires some family allegiances, accountabilities, responsibilities and privileges. The home is the refuge for its dwellers of a family who need to stay calm and come out of the hard times together by supporting each other. Except marriage, all the other relations exist mostly by blood from the time people have known each other. Marriage is about two individuals who are not familiar with each other, united together to create love between them and create a new link of relationship. Family members always keep the regard of their family members in front of the others. Lose Talk about each other's weakness, the bond that connects the family and impacts the reputation of a family. In most of the legal systems, family members are not allowed to attest or testify in the court if the person accused is a close member of the family for crime that has happened outside the family. Storch's style of love can also grow among two close friends or if two individuals are staying together for a long time. Such friendships are long-lasting and will continue even if there is a breakup in among them. Some of the noticeable characteristics of Storge are Storge people don't go looking for love specifically, but if they come across someone special, they are ready for them. Storge lovers are possessive about their partners, but at the same time, they are not excessively envious. They think that love develops with friendship, but is not an aim in life. Become intimate with their partners only once there is an assured commitment. Secondary Types Pragma Pragma is represented by color green and it is a combination of two primary styles of love, Storge and Ludus. Unlike a Ludus lover who likes the fantasy world, a Pragma loves is more practical and is someone who knows how to upkeep marriage for a long time. It could be described as an expedient type of love. Although they look forward to a comfortable marriage, they are never in it for passion. Pragma lovers know what they want from their partners and hunt for the right one. They will date many people till they have found their perfect soulmate. Pragma lovers select and reject their lovers according to what they extricate as appropriate and harmonious individualities. They look for value in their partners and together with their partners intend on working towards a common goal. The expediency and practicality of pragmatic love often assists permanence of the bond as long as the beliefs and the goals intended continue to be shared for that period. If too much is pondered upon these two specific things, then the relationship will be thought of as an exchange or service. The approach could become scornful and noxious if either one of them thinks of the relationship to be a burden. Some examples could be caring for a child, earning to run the family or chores at home. This form of love and cooperation which exists among a couple should not be thought to be bad. There are many cultures where marriages are arranged and pragmatic love mostly happens when it comes down to selecting partners. In developing countries, beliefs will be mutual in a couple when it comes to earning, taking care of family or building savings for future. Examples of pragmatic lovers could be political marriages. Some of the noticeable characteristics of pragma are They are clear about what type of partner they want. 
Pragma individuals usually try to have a relationship with a known person. They are certain that a close and loving bond is significant for a happy life. They expect their partners also to respond with the same affection or feeling as they have for them. Pragmatic individuals think that physical harmony can be worked out. Agape Agape depicts orange color and is an amalgamation of storge and eros styles of individuals. Agape actually means spiritual love, which is why it is also the purest form of love. Agape individuals think of love as something very holy and they get immense satisfaction once they fulfill the needs of their partners. There are times when the agape lovers will also sacrifice their desires and wants to meet the expectations of the partners. They are willing to do everything in their reach to make their lovers happy to an extent that they sometimes end up falling into difficult situations. Their act doesn't hurt them all because they believe that they are doing the best for their partners. Also, agape lovers don't believe in divorce or breakups. Such people take their partners to be blessings in their lives and always take good care of them. They get happiness by giving rather than taking something from their lover. They are extremely faithful to their lovers and if there are breakups in their lives, they tend to wait tolerantly for the return of their partners. Some of the important traits of such individuals are understanding, patience, loyalty, forgiving and sacrificing. They sacrifice their wants and needs for their partners. In short, they are generous people. A drawback of agapic individuals is that they can make their partners feel guilty of being ineffective as a partner and another detriment here is that the partners tend to take advantage of agapic lovers. In another form, agape could take the form of martyrdom. Martyrdom could be suitable at times if it is to uphold an emotionally unhealthy relationship. Some of the noticeable characteristics of agape are Agapic individuals are attracted to various other types of people. They mingle with people easily so they are likely to have a relationship with a stranger. Irrespective of the number of partners they have, they are concerned about everyone and will show the same love and care to all of them. They are neither obsessed nor jealous. They love having physical relationships and also look forward to improve it. Mania Lee has selected the color violet to represent mania. Mania has a simple interpretation which is insane and is a fine mix of ludus and eros styles. Individuals under this category are always under the impression that they might lose their partners. That is why they tend to be very possessive, afraid of losing their lover, control their relationship and think of their lovers to be their property. With it, they also don't like to be alone and have always been found to be in relationships. They are easygoing and don't hesitate to grab on to a new relationship. They speak high of their partners and are very possessive. Love to them is strengthening of value and liberation. Education, knowledge, nature and finances of the partner is of no value to a manic partner. If the other partner doesn't respond or doesn't express their love enough, they think of their partners to be money-oriented and disconnected. In its excessive nature, a manic could be obsessed and could be overly jealous and possessive. Some of the noticeable characteristics of mania are A mania individual is always eager to fall in love and also expects that there could be pain involved while he is in a relationship immediately gets flabbergasted by thoughts of their lover. At times, a maniac lover will force their partner into displaying love and emotions towards them. They can get irritated easily and are not much into physical intimacies. Attachment Theory Edward John Moston Bowlby, commonly referred to as John Bowlby, was a psychiatrist, psychoanalyst and psychologist who is noted for his attachment theory. According to Bowlby's theory of attachment, kids are born into this world who have already been biologically encoded to form bonds with others as this bond helps them survive the world. Bowlby was influenced by Lawrence's study of imprinting and ethological theory. Bowlby thought that attachment behaviors are intuitive and will be triggered by any circumstances that seem to intimidate the attainment of immediacy, such as parting, uncertainty and dread. 
Bowlby also proposed that the panic of outsiders signifies an imperative existence contrivance constructed naturally. Babies are born with a tendency to certain inborn activities known as social releases that help in ensuring closeness and forming a bond with their mother or attachment figure such as laughing, crawling, crying, etc. These behaviors differ in every species. When humans evolved, it would have been the babies who remained close to their mothers that would have continued to help kids. Bowlby conjectured that the mothers and infants would have changed biological want to remain connected to each other. This affection deeds works like fixed designs in the beginning and all share the same purpose. The baby generates inborn social release behaviors like laughing or crying which trigger care and love from the adults. The determinant of affection is not food but love and receptiveness. Bowlby recommended that a baby would earlier form just one bond and that the attachment figure functioned like a protected ground to discover the world. The attachment relationship performs like a sample for all the communal relationships of future, so if it were troublesome, then it could have austere results. Important Points of Bowlby's Theory An infant has the need to connect to one key attachment figure. Bowlby doesn't specifically instruct on having just one attachment figure, but he specified the need for one main attachment which was more essential than the others, usually the mother. Bowen thinks that this special bond is different from other attachments that will form in the baby's life. He also debates that the relationship of the infants with their mothers is totally different from other relationships. Fundamentally, Bowlby recommended that this characteristic of having a close bond with just one individual meant that if the maternal bonding failed to happen, it would lead to dire consequences, probably comprising of psychopathy where there was no love. This theory of bonding with one individual has been termed as monotropy and it is on this basis that he formulated his hypothesis on maternal deprivation. The child behaves in ways which provokes closeness to the person who cares for him or her. The child signals behaviors such as movement, laugh or cry to their caregivers who immediately respond to the behavior of the child by making a common design of communication. A child should be cared for by this important attachment figure for the first two years of his or her birth. According to Bowlby, motherhood should not be hindered for at least two and a half years of the child. If the attachment is broken or stalled, the child is bound to suffer maternal deprivation for a long time. This risk will remain until the age of five. He uses the term maternal deprivation to denote the loss of the mother and the failure of a mother to cultivate this bond or attachment. The fundamental supposition of Bowlby's maternal deprivation hypothesis is that repetitive disturbance of the connection between newborn and main caregiver of the mother might result in long-term intellectual, societal and emotive complications for that newborn. The insinuations of this are huge. If this is correct, must the mother leave their babies in daycare while they go to work? Long-term results of being derived from the mother could comprise of the following symptoms. Felony or neglected behavior. Reduced brain power. Augmented hostility. Depression. Affectionless psychopathy. Affectionless psychopathy is being unable to display love and concern for others. These people behave on instinct with slight or no regard for the results of their doings. They will hardly be affected for displaying disruptive behaviors. James Robertson and Bowlby trust that short-term separation from an attachment figure leads to distress. They found that there are three stages of distress which are protest, the child will shout, scream and protest if the parent goes. They hang on to their parents in their try not to let them go. Despair. A child will stop protesting and become calm but will be unhappy about it and refuse to listen to others if they come to comfort them. They will not be interested for or in anything. Detachment. 
If this separation continues for a longer period, then the child will start connecting with the person who cares for him or her, and when the main caregiver returns, they will not want to go back with them and display anger. The connection of the child with their main caregiver leads to the growth of an internal working model. The internal working model is an intellectual structure consisting illustrations for understanding self, others and the world. An individual's contact with others is directed by recollections and anticipations from their internal model which affect and aid in assessing their interaction with others. When the child turns three, these tend to become a part of the child's character and impacts their apprehension of the world and forthcoming communications with others. The main caregiver is the model for the forthcoming relations through the internal working model. The main characteristics of the internal working model are a model of the self as precious, a model of others as being reliable and a model of the self as effective while communicating with others. The communal and emotive behaviours of a child's internal working model direct their receptiveness to others in common. Vulnerability and care theory of love. The vulnerability and care theory of love has been explained by James Giles, who is a psychologist and philosopher. James Giles first mentioned about his theory in 2008 in the book The Nature of Sexual Desire. Giles rejects the views that the sexologists present, which is that sexual desire is a biological characteristic which is important to reproduce. Giles presents an incredible method by saying that sexual wants are an existential requirement rooted in the human condition, established on a feeling of not being complete from the understanding of one's own gender as a type of imbalance. The theory of Giles is somewhat similar to the theories of Aristophanes on romantic love in Plato's Symposium and that of Thomas Nagel on sexual perversion. Naked Love Theory in 2010, Giles published his works through a book, Human Hairlessness. He proposed that hairlessness in human beings developed because of the skin-to-skin -skin contact between a child and mother and hence eventually as a result of bipedalism. As per the theory of Giles, naked skin is a perquisite for the presence of romantic love. Reward Theory of Attraction this theory describes that individuals are attracted to those whose activities is rewarding to them or who they connect with rewarding actions. To make it simpler and clearer, people like to spend their time with those who make them feel comfortable and nice or those that they enjoy being around with. Research Helen Fisher There were two experiments conducted by Fisher. The first one was a study on women and men who had just fallen in love madly. With the help of fMRI, or Functional Magnetic Resonance Imaging, they collated their data based on seven men and ten women who said they were in love for the past 7.4 months on an average. Every participant was shown a photograph of the one they were in love with and a person who was not emotionally connected. Every view was trailed by a diversion task to clean the mind of overpowering emotions. When the participants saw the photograph of the one they loved, there was a high brain activation which generated and distributed dopamine, and the brains, or the neutral network connected with excitement, desire, attention and inspiration. Helen Fisher conducted another fMRI in 2005 in which the participants were still in love with their ex. There were five men and ten women in the test. These precluded participants saw the pictures of their past partners and of someone alike but emotionally neutral person. There was a similar increase in the dopamine of the participants when they saw the pictures of their ex. There have been more studies conducted by Liu, Gingrich, Insol, Wang and Cassio who have performed this similar research on animals. Effects on Attraction People are attracted to those who they find satiating and pleasing to spend time with. If a particular gives people more returns and happiness than discomfort and cost, they would want to continue with that relationship. That is why even if that relationship comes to an end, they find themselves attracted to those people. 
This also clarifies why love doesn't feel the same initially. These initial produced vibrations, those are completely fresh and unacquainted that the experience feels completely illusory. Besides emotive engagement, these experiences also have lots of freshness. This freshness drives up the norepinephrine and dopamine, which the brain system related to concentration and recompenses. One is in their first romantic relationship if they are in love without being hurt while they are in this relationship. If one stumbles across someone who looks, behaves and has many traits like their ex, it could involve the illustration in their reminiscence. Since their first love was an outcome of its freshness and emotional importance is probably most noticeable, it might be the illustration that is recalled on meeting a probable someone new, which impacts the approach you see that new relationship. Their old inspirations, anticipations and feelings are all transported into their reminiscence which can source them to start behaving the same way as they did with their ex, if their new partners remind them of their ex. People being attracted to those who make them feel nice could also clarify as to why they are attracted to those who they cannot get. Bad love is the most powerful of all. Dopamine plays an important role. Over desire, dopamine is connected with inspiration, emphasis and objective-focused actions. When you cannot get someone, the dopamine system continues to spill hormones, giving adrenaline concentrate and inspiration to continue trying. Other effects the reward theory helps clarify. This theory also helps in explaining as to why individuals are attracted to those who are close to them, are better looking, much alike and those who have mutual feelings. Closeness is gratifying. It takes less energy to get benefits from friendship through someone who stays close to you or works together with you. All like good-looking people as they identify these attractive people to offer other required characteristics and they profit from connecting with them. If others have some thoughts like oneself, we feel as though we have been rewarded as we assume that they too are attracted to us. It is in human nature that individuals like to be liked by others. Thus, liking is a mutual feeling as we like those who like us too. Filter Theory Filter theory is all about dating and selection of a partner. It is a sociological theory. It suggests that the social structure restricts the count of appropriate aspirants for a mate. This usually happens because of homogamy, where you tend to marry someone of your own relation, cousins, etc. Because people wish to get married to people who have the same social status, belong to the same caste and religion, etc. Homogamy is where spouses share the same physiognomies, whereas heterogamy is where partners have completely different characteristics. Heterogamous is all about being attracting to someone who is a completely different individual. Some terms which are used in filter theory are endogamy, where the parents come from the same religion, age, ethnicity, lifestyle, etc., and might also carry forward this same tradition and restrict their children from marrying people from a different group. Exogamy is where spouses are from different social groups and mostly married outside one's religion or caste. Sociological Perception all the cultures of the world have various anticipated traits in a partner, but all of these various traits fall into the same groups. For instance, the conditions for a love marriage would reveal an individual's private trepidations, like an individual's and relational abilities of a potential mate and compatibility matters, whereas conditions for arranged marriages reveal apprehensions of the complete family. These domestic apprehensions comprise of power, status, temperament, health, fertility and emotive permanence of the potential partner. Still, the likenesses in features among the two partners are constant in both types of marriages. People are attracted to those who have same standard and living style. These individuals have a better chance of same individual tastes, views and principles with each other which makes it easy to institute a close relationship. Such features can be integrated through various social networks. Opposing some belief, the thought that having the same occupation is not the reason to have a strong bond of compatibility. 
Education homophily has a tendency which endorses ethnic variances and resemblances are sturdier than professional ranking. Fundamentally, this means even if working in closeness with someone in the same workforce doesn't essentially lead to a sturdier connection than having similarities in education. This also goes back to the resemblances among education and ethos. In education, there is a differentiation of the bigger noble group into smaller noble group, which share the same upbringings, subjects and financial status. This lets homogamy among these subdivisions of nobles, therefore making groups which have two or more similarities in common. This example of educational values and position shows how people connect to each other in the world through social networks. Theory of Complementary Needs Robert F. Winch conducted a study on 25 couples to test the theory of how complementariness would be operational while selecting a partner. As per the theory, an individual selects a partner depending on their wants being complementary to their own. It starts with observing in the United States of America a couple is made when individuals meet and get familiar to each other and then fall in love before they plan on marrying each other. As an outcome, Winch suggests that since meeting someone seems to be a prerequisite to fall in love, what deductions could be made about one who an individual meets or is probably going to meet? He says that it is obvious that if an individual frequently visits a place he or she will probably meet someone who is used to the same type of things, they will have the same principles and will have the same likes and dislikes which also established that the people had a tendency to connect with married people who were in relation to them. This is also regarded thought to be something right for one to get married to someone within their caste, religion, etc. He debated that there was a set of factors that homogamy was revealed to be operational in income, race, age, intelligence, location of home, education level, social class, etc. With these factors in place, it is certain for us to connect with a certain set of people who have been selected. They are described as a field of eligible spouse candidates. These partners are not only individuals who are close in nearness, but in fact individuals who we pass by every day but never notice them. In simple words, an individual spouse might end up being the person who comes for the dance class every day or someone who is a frequent to swimming in the club with them. Love, in its several forms, actions as a main expediator of relational interactions and which is why love has its own psychological significance and is one of the most common subjects in creative arts. Love might be thought of a purpose to keep humans together from the dangers and to expedite the continuance of the class. There could be many scientific explanations of love, but for most, love could be something completely different from these theories. Love is difficult to explain, yet the theories which have been explained by different people are the ones that have been explained the best. The six theories that we spoke of are all connected with us in our daily lives, but we hardly take time in understanding them.